The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Between the blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminus on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those in the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube and watching on Oriented Television. We got a guest this week. We got the voice of Dragon Football, the legendary voice of Dragon Football, Coach Doug Corliss. Coach, welcome. Sammy, how you doing? I am good. I mean, like, of course, I still remember that Friday game, obviously, that call, um, that touchdown um, call you made with the, with that beautiful slant pass from Tristan Hill to Jamari Cooper and to give Lake Orion their first win against West Bloomfield in 10 years. I was just telling Joey Tysick as I walked in, that fourth quarter of that game Friday night is a blur to me. Mm-hmm. If someone had told me I jumped out of the press box, I'd have probably believed them. Yeah, I mean, like obviously, and I and I look at those, and I look at that game, and I think we should break that game down first. And I think obviously, coming into the game, both teams high octane offenses. West Bloomfield coming in at three and zero. Lake Orion, I mean, after thirty four points a game, Lake Orion three and zero, averaging forty points a game, but both defenses really came to play. And obviously on West Bloomfield's part, without Montel Johnson, without Kari Jackson, both their linebackers done for the over the AC with ACL injuries. Um when you look at both the way both defenses played in that game, you wouldn't have thought it would have been 17 13. What surprised me was West Bloomfield's rushing attack. Mm-hmm. They had a lot of rushes, but they really did not have a lot of yards gained. They, play, you know, request Nance. He's a good quarterback. You could see that, but I don't think he had a good game. He had a lot of happy feet all through that game Friday night. I don't think he was ever comfortable back there with Lake Orion's pass rush. Well, with obviously with Raekwon Nance, you know he likes to go deep with Elijah Durham. He he has Morris out there, too. Um, when you look at that game with West Bloomfield, I noticed something with them that something was different. Now, with West Bloomfield, they have a habit of making terrible decisions and terrible times. The penalties killed them in this game. Exactly. And that's one thing that we talked about after the broadcast is West Bloomfield had a breakdown in discipline. And that used to be a trait of old West Bloomfield teams. And I used that before Ron Bellamy came. Uh, After Coach Bellamy came, he settled that program down. Uh, They were pretty settled down last year, and I was really surprised to see them go back to those old habits last Friday night. They took some very, very silly penalties, unnecessary penalties, penalties that were just lack of discipline. And that's something that they're going to have to clean up. And the big one here, obviously, was the Bryce Rowe 15-yard penalty. Um, what When you look at that penalty... You know, especially when you look at it's Bryce Rowe, who's a CMU commit, who committed that penalty, and then two plays later, he's the one who got beat on that slant route with the Jamari Cooper. So, you know, so you're think I mean, like, so if you're Bryce Rowe, you gotta be just, just upset. I was talking with the officiating crew after the game, and I was told that somewhere now. He just, Bryce Rowe just lost his mother this past year. And I was told that somebody made some reference to him about his mother. Mm -hmm. Now, yes or no, I don't know. I wasn't there to hear. That's what was referred to me. I do know that when he got to the sideline, it took three assistant coaches to settle him down. So whatever was said, set him off. Mm-hmm. But still, you know, when you're in the heart of the moment, you know what I mean? I get it. You but get, 
But you, yeah, you get it, but you got to keep your head about it. This mm-hmm. is the thing we've that's been stressed over and over and over as long as I've had an association with football. Is you, it's the old thing you got to keep your head about you when everyone else around you is losing theirs, mm-hmm. and they just didn't have that that momentary measure of self discipline when they needed it most. Mm-hmm. And that was a big moment in the game there. But other parts of the game that was critical, I got to give credit to, is the Lake Orion offensive line. I mean, they played, they had their moments where they had, they had their moments where they looked good. But the big one here is the defense. I mean, look at the stats. Lake Orion's defense gave up 33 Livonia Stevenson. The last three weeks, you know how many points they have? Well, 33 points. Yep. So when you look at this defense, besides that high-octane offense Lake Orion has, that defense has really started to turn things around a little bit. You know what's been flying under the radar is the secondary. Mm -hmm. The secondary has been outstanding, and that makes the pressure that the defensive line puts on that much more effective because you get coverage sacks, you get balls thrown away. You get drops. Yeah, uh, I'll tell you what. I love what that secondary under Coach Blackstock is doing these last few weeks. And that's the big story, obviously. You look at players like Trey Pacmara, Andrew Parker back healthy. That's big. Um, you look at, of course, Austin Kahn. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm doing this all without Corbin Smith has been out with an injury. I mean, mm-hmm. like, that's been – Really impressive when you look at Lake Orion, um, just the way that defense has been playing. I mean, obviously, obviously, look at Caden DeGraff and Reed. You know, you know, you were going to get from him. Um, but the play of Brendan Nedchuk up front, um, linebacking core with Net Carson Negri's been solid. I mean, this team. You know, when you look at this Lake Orion team, I think they're back to a vintage Chris Bell type team. When you look at the what they got, what what got me and and. I talked to Coach Bell about this. Is It seems like Lake Orion came in, and they've been flying under the radar. Well, after Friday night, Lake Orion's been discovered. Yes, they have been. The world, you know, the metro Detroit area, the state of Michigan, knows Lake Orion's back. They are back. They are back, and that's scary for the Red right now. And what it is is you've got a veteran team. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of senior leadership. You've got up-and-coming players as juniors. So, yeah, this is the melding of the seniors, juniors, and not a lot of sophomores in there, a couple. But I'll tell you what, it it's building a foundation for a good run this year and a better and also a good run for next year. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk other teams as well besides Lake Ori and West Bloomfield. Obviously, with West Bloomfield, um, we know they got Adams coming up. It's their homecoming. Um, only three home games in the swap this year. Um, do you think West Bloomfield, obviously, they've got to address some things. They still got to go to Clarkson. They got to play. Um, they got Southfield coming to the swamp. I mean, they got Adams in the swamp. I mean, like, when you look at West Bluefield, do you would you think would you would you do you think panic or patience when you look at the Lakers? I think they underestimated Lake Orion. I don't know that for sure. I wasn't in there for practice, but I really think they didn't. You know that Lake Orion was going to be a you know a mirage. They did it with smoke and mirrors. Well, Lake Orion showed them they're for real. And I don't think West Bloomfield's going to lose again. You don't think? They may. They may. They may, but I don't think so because this was a reality check for West Bloomfield. Not only for the players, but for the coaching staff as well. And I think that West Bloomfield will be a force the rest of the season. I'm looking forward to West Bloomfield and Southfield A&T. I think that's going to be a dogfight. I'm looking forward to West Bloomfield and Clarkston. Yeah, that'll be interesting. That will be a dogfight. So, yeah, like Coach Frishing and I talk about in pregame, 
the OIA spends all their time beating up on each other. Red especially. But that also gets them ready for playoff runs. When you look at, and there's a team we got to talk about. It's Clarkston. I mean, Clarkston, this team lost week one to Northville. And then they beat Lowe's A&T. And the last two weeks, they they found they beat Adams twenty eight to seven, and then they go into Stony Creek, which a lot of people called that was an upset trap. I even called thought that was going to be an upset trap with the way Stony Creek plays. But obviously, when you look at Clarkson, everything starts and ends with Desmond Stevens. Yep. And yes, they got the Bowman twins there. They got Brady Collins there. They got Nick Wachensko there. Um. So when you look at the Wolves. In your mind, what are you looking at with Clarkston? I think they're more balanced than in years past, and I say that because Clarkston has, in the past few years, have had one or two or three standouts. Mm -hmm. You had Ethan Clark. Yep. You had Dollinger. You had Spindler. You You had these standout athletes, and... Clarkston rode those guys like a horse. Mm-hmm. They don't have them this year. They've got some good athletes. The mamas in Clarkston are feeding their kids really well because they keep churning out football players. Mm-hmm. But I think Clarkston is going to be going through a couple of years of a little restock. Mm-hmm. They're not the Clarkston of the past couple of years. No. But when you look at their schedule coming up, their schedule's brutal. I mean, you got Eisenhower, they got to play. They got to play Lake Orion. You got to play West Bloomfield. And I and I read what Scott Bernstein said. He said they had their, he was he said Clarkson was their bold pick to win the OA Red. I'm not buying that no, one bit. I'm not either. Um, but then you look at a team like Adams, who's virtually young. You know, to touch on Clarkson with who they have to play mm-hmm. the rest of the way through. I was thinking on the way up, maybe six and three, that they'll have one more loss, hopefully to Lake Orion. But with who they've got to play, I think they're going to be lucky to make the playoffs this year. If, you know, when you look at the system, how it is right now, I mean, if even if they finish like three and six, mm-hmm. I mean, I would still take them into the postseason despite the record, despite who they played. Yeah. And I think that's the point when you look at Clarkson. Is, you know, I don't know if Clarkston, you know, I mean, they got Oxford coming up this week. Oxford, that's a whole nother story. They got, that's, they've got some issues. We got to address that. Yeah. Uh, I thought after last year that Oxford would have a l- little bit of a renaissance. They've had, they've already won more games than they did last mm-hmm. year. Coach line is really doing a good job with those kids. You, know, you can't underestimate the job that Zach Lyon has done there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, they are paying the price for being in the OAA Red. Mm-hmm. That every week, they're going to play someone that's probably in the top 25. Yep. That's a tall order for, for a school like that. It is. And especially, you know, what they've had the gall through. You know, what they've gone through, you know, obviously with what they've gone through. But Oxford and Clarkson, that's going to be an interesting game. It will be. Mm -hmm. Where's it at? It's at Wildcat Stadium. Okay. Yeah. So we'll see. It it all depends. Actually, that's going to come down to which Clarkson team shows up. If the one who shows up against Stony, that Stony Creek, that could be an interesting game, especially – with how young that offense is, both teams are going to have sophomore quarterbacks. Yeah. I mean, Clarkson with Brady Collins, Oxford with Jack Hendricks. Um, you know, I think it might come down to a Desmond Stevens, you know, you know, or a Jay Cady, you know what I mean? Or a Drew Cady. And I thought Hendricks throws a great ball. He does. Two weeks ago when Oxford came in, I was very impressed with that sophomore. He, mm-hmm. he puts it on a rope. Yep, and Luke Johnson, he had a heck of a game against Blake Corey, and I remember that two touchdowns. I mean, like, I remember talking to Coach Lyon on the podcast about Luke Johnson, the more than capabilities that he can bring um, to the table. I mean, like, but Oxford, 
you know, this is a big game for them. They have to win this week if they want to get themselves some confidence. I mean, the loss to Adams, you know, you kind of look at that score. It was 6 nothing to half. I mean, they were trailing yeah. only 6 nothing. Then everything just fell apart for them. Yep. Um, speaking of Adams, um, Adams has been like 3-1 and one right now. Yes, they got Ryan Waters, Ryan Waters at quarterback, Mateo Humbert at running back, um, and then Brady pre-scored. Um, Adams has found a way to win games. You know, they have, despite Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I, I've been really disappointed with Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Rochester's been, eh. And then, and then last week against Oxford, you know what I mean? It kind of, and they had that pick up against Clarkston where they were just exposed in that one, 28 to 7. So what is your initial thoughts when you look at, when you look at Adams? Adams still has to play West Bloomfield. Ouch. That's this week at West Bloomfield's homecoming the Swamp. Yep. Adams still has to play Lake Orion. Yes, it'll be at their place. Yep. But let's face it, and we, we just talked about it, Lake Orion is for real. And they're motivated after what happened to them last year. They played them twice in the pl- and won yes. the playoffs. Yes. So, Adams, yes, it's a typical Tony Petrito team. The Veer. They're, yeah, the Veer, they're going to be fundamentally sound, but does you know Oxford or Adam. Oxford? I'm sorry, Adams has to be more one dimensional than Brady Prescorn. Mm-hmm. And that comes down to Mateo Humbert. Can Mateo Humbert? You know he has to be instrumental for Adams to be successful. Yeah. And you know, and I think that's the key going forward for Adams. Mm-hmm. And then there's Stony Creek. I mean, Stony Creek is probably. The hardest one in three team to figure out in the entire state. They're probably the best. They one are the in best one in three team in the state. In the state. Considering yeah. what they got. They got a big quarterback in Jack McCarthy. He is really good. Yep. Kyle Parks at running back. You look at Sam Fogler, who also plays running back. Offensive line is solid. I mean, you look at that team and you say, how can this team be one in three? You know? Yep. I mean. Hey, you know what? You. You can score thirty-five points, but if you give up thirty-seven, you're you know, and and they've got to get their defense shored up. Mm-hmm. You know, not that they've been bad, but they haven't been great. Well, you look at that game against West Bloomfield, though. I mean, forty thirty-three was that score in that yeah. game, and then last week on their homecoming, they lost fourteen ten to Clarkson. So you know, you don't know what Stony Creek team you're gonna get, yeah. but you know, Coach Merlo likes to run time possession football. You know that uh, he he'll basically line to run at least six, six, seven minutes of the clock. You know, I mean, you think about it. You know, if you think about it, that Lake Orion Stony Creek game, that's got that's got upset potential maybe in that game if Lake Orion's not careful. Well, it does, but if it ends up being a track meet, they'll be in trouble. Yes, I mean, look how you know Lake Orion is able to move the ball on the ground and in the air on the sweep. On the ends around, you don't know where they're coming from. Mm-hmm. And if Stony Creek finds themselves in a track meet with Lake Orion, I doubt they'll be, because you're not going to win a track meet no. running the ball all night long. You're no. going to have to air it out. Yep, and we know Stony Creek, they've been, they've been balanced. I mean, they've had some balance. Um, McCarthy's a big quarterback. I mean, like, he is yep. big. And you look at, of course, Kyle Parks. I mean, like, he's been a really solid back. Sam Fogler's been solid. I mean, Jonah McKay's another one. I mean, like, Stony Creek, they got pieces. You know, they got pieces. They got Adam Bazzi at tight end who could play wide receiver, too. I mean, they've got weapons. I mean, you look at the games that they've been in. They lost to Harper Woods. They've lost to West Bloomfield. Um, you know, they, they got, I mean, they do have a win on their belt. But so it's going to be interesting to see how Stony and the, how Stony Creek looks um, going forward when you look at the Cougars. So does it come down to how they perform under pressure? That's the question. Yeah. I mean, if Lake Orion gets out to a two touchdown lead, will they be able to keep the, the discipline and be able to come back? That's the question. Last year's game, that was 24, 14 in favor right. of Lake Orion. I mean, let's not forget Lake Orion does have Billy Roberson and and T.R. Hill back. Both those guys absolutely killed Stony Creek last year in Rochester. 
So when you look at that game, you know Lake Orion's got a lot of experience in that one. Stony Creek, we know if they play time possession football, it could be really interesting. But that's the key's going to be on that defense. You know, if Lake Orion, you know, in that game against Stony Creek, I mean, Stony Creek, they love that time possession football. So we'll see what happens. One more thing back on Lake Orion. One thing that Coach Frishing and I were talking about during, you know, the first, the early part of the season. And I, I'm really glad to see it happen last Friday night is Jamari Cooper. Mm-hmm. Jamari Cooper goes out and does his job every snap of the ball. He's running. He's throwing key blocks. And for him to get that slant pass and take it in, I was thrilled for Jamari Cooper. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's been working really, really hard, obviously. So when you look at Lake Orion right now, they're rolling right now. When you look at that red right now, I would say right now, Lake Orion, West Bloomfield, Clarkston, Adams, Stony Creek, and Oxford. You think that would be the um, good order in the standings right now, you think? Well, that's pretty much the way it is right now. Yeah. So, yeah, right now, Lake Orion is there for somebody to come and take it away. Right. And then it's going to be the dogfight. Right now, I think West Bloomfield has the advantage. But it's going to, you're right, then it's going to be a three-horse race between West Bloomfield, Clarkston, and Adams. Yep, and that's what's going to come down to when you look at the red is those three teams. Um, let's go now from the red to the white. Um, Southfield, they've been battle-tested. Defense, not necessarily they've been the greatest, but they came up big in clutch situations. Um, had a had a um, game-winning touchdown save for them against Groves. Um, when you look at Southfield Arts and Tech, everybody says this is it for them. You know, the senior-heavy team, um, you know, when you look at, they've got, this is the year for them, is Southfield. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, Southfield is going to go as far as Isaiah Marshall is going to take them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's a quarterback. It's hard to double team on a quarterback. You've got to be aware where he is on the field on every snap of the ball. Mm -hmm. You can't overload to put pressure on the quarterback because he's got receivers that'll light you up. So, yeah, they're going to go as far as Isaiah Marshall takes them, and right now the way Isaiah Marshall's playing, he's going to take them a long way. And he got, obviously, Tashi Braceville there. He's been doing a really good job with for Southfield. They've got others as well. I mean, but when you look at Southfield's path, obviously – you know, it's going to lighten up, obviously, because they played four really good teams. Mm -hmm. So they pretty much, I'm not going to be mean on Farmington's case. Obviously, they got Cameron Petaway there. But, you know, when you look at, they got Rochester, they got Blue Bia Hills on the schedule. Their toughest matchup won't be till week eight when they go to the swamp. Um, and when you look at Southfield's path, you know, they could, they should be at least 7-0 and heading into the swamp. You know, when you look at the Warriors. They should be. Yes, mm -hmm. I agree, and and again, it's it's as far as Isaiah Marshall can take them. Should Isaiah Marshall get hurt, which I hope doesn't happen, because you never want to see an athlete get hurt. But can they reclaim their season? Should he go down? And there's no reason to think he will, but. He is the player they can least afford to lose. And that's the big one, obviously. Um, let's look at Harper Woods. Obviously, the Pioneers. Um, first, I mean, they had a good win against Stony Creek, 34-21. I know people look at that controversial call mm -hmm. there. Um, then two weeks, they played Lake Orion and Southfield. Of course, Lake Orion, they were just completely robbed, 28-6. to And then, and then against... Um, Southfield, they had that tough 34-26 loss there. And then last week, they bounced back, knocking off Rochester 56-26. So what is your initial thoughts when you look at Harper Woods? Welcome to the OAA. Mm -hmm. And as we've said before, and it holds true for every division, week after week after week, 
it's going to be a dogfight, and you better come ready for it. Mm-hmm. And don't be surprised if a key, if a team comes up and bites you. I don't think that they expected to lose to Lake Orion. They came in; their preseason hype was up was was really high. Well, considering that they're going to be in Division Four for the playoffs, you know, I yeah. still think they're going to be a playoff team with all the teams they've been yes, playing. Yes, they will. And they're going to be one of the top favorites in Division Four when you look at it, yeah. um, because of the schedule they played. So when you look at Harper Woods' path, I mean, you can look at players like, I mean, Jacoby, I mean, Jacob Olden. You look at they got some playmakers there. I mean, they got they got some playmakers. Stephon Buford's another one. Um, when you look at Harper Woods, obviously, what was your initial thoughts? You know, obviously, you know they're sitting at two and two right now. They got Bloopy. They still got to play Groves, which is going to be very interesting. I think Groves is, they got to go into Wayne County. Um, so that's going to be a very interesting test for for Harper Woods, you know, going forward. I think that uh, I'm, I I kind of picked Harper Woods at five and four this year. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's simply because they are in, albeit the tied for the toughest division in the OAA. The red and white are both really tough divisions with some really good teams. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it can end up to be who's left. Mm -hmm. Who's left standing after week eight or week nine. Mm -hmm. And there's another team we got to talk about here is Groves. I mean, when you look at the Falcons, you know, when I look at Groves, they're two and two. They were just completely blown out by West Bloomfield. Um, and then they had that tough 42-35 loss to A&T. Um, I think Groves' defense has been, been a problem, Mark, and that's very unusual for a Coach Brendan Flaherty team. I mean... Yeah, Coach Flaherty sometimes does it with smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. He gets some good athletes. He develops his players really well. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I, I'm... Not surprised. I'm I'm kind of surprised that they're two and two. Why? Because they're a good football team, mm -hmm. and it's it's all part of the dogfight that's the OAA white, as it is with teams in the OAA red. Like I said previously, these are two very very good conferences who spend most of the season beating each other up. And when you look at and when you look at Groves' schedule, they still got to play Seaholm. They still got to play. Um, you know, they they got Harper Woods coming up. Mm -hmm. I mean, like they got Rochester this week. Rochester, you kind of knew with them it was going to be they were going to. They had a veteran team last year, yeah. won their first game in school. I mean, first playoff game in school history by beating Stony Creek last year. Off to a really rough start at one and three. Um, when you look at the Falcons, um. What do you, I mean, they got a good running back in Jack Lauer, but, and Jack Lower, but he just, Rochester just really hasn't, you know, they haven't really, I think a lot of that's the inexperience and the skill positions for Rochester. Coach Vernon rebuilds and he'll get a team and he'll have, you know, he'll get, he'll be senior heavy and he'll develop that. They'll have a good year. Graduation comes in. He's got to do it all over again. Every team in, in high school football has a th about a three-year turnover rate. Mm -hmm. But that's where some of the young guys come up. Maybe they don't play a lot their first or second year, but by the time they get to be seniors, they know the program. You can't wait and bring up a bunch of juniors to the varsity and have them be productive that first year. It just can't happen. No. So that's where they're at this year. They're in a developing year, not a rebuilding, but a developing year where they're developing those players to take the next step in 24. It's kind of the same thing with Bloopia Hills, obviously. The same thing with Bloopia Hills. I mean, same situation. But Bloopia Hills, they got a quarterback in Kieran Crosley. Um, they got a um, – in Jace Reed, they got a very good – they got a very yes. good player in Jace Reed. Um when you look at Bloopy Hills, when you look at them for media day, they were very high on their line. But last two weeks, they've been very competitive. I mean, 
you know, first three, two weeks of the year, they were just blown out by Seaholm, and then they were blown out by Seaholm, I remember that, and then they were blown out another game as well. But when you look at Bloomfield Hills, last two weeks, very competitive. For Chlorio, it may take him a while, but he'll get his team to play for him. Mm-hmm. No question. And, you know, again, they are they had a good season last year. They did not have oh, a good I'm year. sorry. That, yeah, two years ago, you're right. Yeah. But, yeah, they're in that building phase. Not rebuilding, but building phase. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Next year, they should have a much more competitive team than they have this year because those kids that they brought up in their rebuild are going to be leading the team. Yeah. And then you look at Farmington. I mean, Farmington, they're off to a 2-2 two and two start. Tough schedule, though, they've played. Um, mm-hmm. I do want to get your thoughts on this. Um, the Farmington Cup not being played this year between North Farmington and Farmington, that was very unfortunate how the scheduling worked out. Yeah. But when you look at Farmington, they had to play Muskegon Reese Puffer, which was tough. They've had to play, um, they played Groves. That was tough. Um, when you look at Farmington, you know, you're going to have, we're going to have Farmington coming to Lake Orion in a couple weeks. Yep. Um, which that's going to be interesting. I mean, we talked about Cam Petaway a lot. Um, so what is your thoughts on coach um, Jason Albrecht's team? Well, again, that's going to be a, a building team. Their schedule hasn't done them and will not do them any favors coming down the stretch. Like you said, they've still got to come to Lake Orion for Lake go, Orion's homecoming. They got to go to Swinehart. Yeah, they got to play go Utica. To, yes, they, they, you know, they're a victim of the schedule. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, that they're playing some very good, very fundamentally sound, very powerful teams. Mm-hmm. That being said you got to get your team ready to go out week after week after week. There are some nights you're just going to be out, man. Mm-hmm. That will happen. But they're doing it the right way. They're keeping up. They're getting competitive in games that they can be competitive in. Farmington's got Southfield this week. Well, let's go on to the week. After. Yeah, and then because, and the Harvard was at Boopy yeah. Hills this week, and then you have yeah. Groves and Rochester, the Battle of the Falcons. Yeah. Um, which, you know, that'll be very interesting. But when I look at the white division right now, I would say it's Southfield, Harper Woods, Groves, Farmington, Rochester, Bloomfield Hills. I'd flip-flop Groves and Harper Woods. I that'll be really interesting those yeah. two teams meet in Wayne County. That'll be really interesting to see exactly. how those two teams meet. Let's go down to the blue. I mean, this has been this division has been just crazy, wild and crazy. When you look at, of course, Oak Park starting off the year 0 and 2. So it kind of, so when they played both Troy schools, Troy and Troy Athens, yep. now they said 2 and 2, got confidence. But I really think the best team in that division is Seaholm. Just the way that that team has played. They've been dominant. The only hiccup of their, this season's been that 28 10 loss to UD Jesuit. I mean, I really, really love what Coach Jim Dewall has done with the Sea with, with Seaholm. And it starts and ends with the Kenny boys. Yes, it does. And Coach DeWald is one of those, you know, we've talked about it with other coaches. They, they can keep, he keeps his team on an even keel. Doesn't let them get too high. Doesn't let them get too low. Has them ready to, I'll tell you what, you, you know when you play Seaholm, you're going to get a team that's prepared. You're going to get a team that will, Play hard. They're going to be fundamentally sound. And Coach DeWalt's done this for years. I remember when he was at Andover. Yeah. You know, I mean, like when he was at Pontiac Northern as well. I mean, like I, he's been a guest on my podcast numerous times. You know what I mean? I remember, I remember, but one thing that's bothered me with Seahome has been when they play Arch Rival Groves. I mean, like that's not. That rivalry's been like almost one side. I mean, ten of the last yeah. twelve meetings, Groves has beaten Seaholm. Um, and I really think that when you look at Seaholm, you know, they gotta do well with the kids they got. You yeah. know what I mean? Inner city rivalries are always, you know, amazing. Yeah, you, know, you mentioned Seaholm and Groves, how it's one sided to Groves. You look at Adams Rochester, 
it's really one sided. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. I remember. I think 1996 was the last time Rochester went into Adams. And, went and beat Adams. Yeah, and there you have, and they have Stony Creek there too. Right, you have Rochester, you have Rochester Adams and Stony Creek. So those inner city, and that's the thing. You never know what's going. North Farmington and Farmington. (laughs) North Farmington and Farmington. You just never know what's going to happen in an inner city rivalry. And both those teams have that date circled on their calendars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, they're going to play everything else in between, but it's going to come down to beating your, you know, playing and beating your crosstown rival. No matter who it is. No matter if they're in, the, in different divisions. I mean, right. obviously, see, Groves in the white, Seals in the blue. Um, I want to get your thoughts on North Farmington. When you look at the Raiders, started off 0-3. Their schedule was brutal. Played Groves week one. I remember the block field goal attempt, which led to a Groves touchdown, which changed a lot in that game. And then they had to play Caledonia. You know how Caledonia, yeah. they had to go, the, and they had to go west. Yes. And then they played Seahome where they gave a 56. I mean, their defense was absolutely shredded until last week when they played Troy Athens. And they won that game 22-7. So when you really look at North Farmington, just the schedule is absolutely just, it's killed them. But it's also helped them in some sort. But you know what? The schedule comes out early. You know what you're going to have. I don't know what to put my finger on for North Farmington. Um, The first couple years, they did pretty good with some of the Harrison uh, Mm -hmm. coaching staff coming over. It's both of them. I mean, they're still on that staff. Boy, you know, where has it fallen off the rails? Are they are, are they going through a rebuild? I you don't know. know if they're going through a rebuild. Yeah. It's just when you look at North Farmington, they're still playing the schedule that they're playing. You know, they're playing all these tough teams. I mean, like, you know, you look at a course, you know, with North Farmington is they got playmakers. They got Ryan Shelby there. They, um. They had a guy had a had a, had a um, young man who went off for two nineteen, rushing in a touchdown mm-hmm. last week against um against Troy Athens. I can't remember the name on top of my head right now, but he had a big game against them. Um, but when you look at Coach John Herstein's team, you know he's got playmakers. It's just I feel like North Farms has been been a victim of the schedule. No question, and and that happens. That happens with every team sometime or another. During the, you know during a football season is you're going to draw a schedule and you're going to look at this and say, oh man, you know and sometimes you think what are we how what are we going to have to do to win a game because we're playing a lot of ranked teams a lot of teams that have a chance to win a division championship you know and crossovers if you're crossing over with a with a west bloomfield or an adams or a lake orion or a lake orion or, or an oxford yeah or or an oxford or a groves or you know whomever yeah you know, that's just the way the schedule comes in and, and like we've heard for years and years and years the schedule comes out we'll play them as they come yep and then speaking of that i want to talk to you the Troy Colts. They were three and zero coming in to their game against Oak Park. Didn't all point. They played Macomb Last Cruz North, Detroit Mumford, and Royal Oak. Didn't allow a point against all, any of those three teams. Yep. Then they played Oak Park. First drive, give up a touchdown. Who's back? When you look at Troy, no Oak Park. Who's back? Um, Oak Park. It's Coach two two. Carter's Coach back. Carter's back, yeah. Coach Carter was off two games. Yeah. He's back. Coach Carter hasn't forgotten how to coach. No. And he's got Oak Park ready to play now. And they're coming off two losses to UD Jesuit, right. and they're coming off to, and they're coming off the, and, and the Oxford. I mean, Oxford was shredded in yep. that game. I mean, like, and then you look at what, what um Oak Park's done, 
two wins against D1 schools. That's a big deal when it comes to playoff points when it looks at Oak Park. Um, I think that team might be back. You know what I mean? But we'll see. They got a big one with Avondale Lumen this week. Yes, so. they do. Whether they're back, that remains to be seen. Seen. I do know this, that they are going to be ready to play when they take the field on a Friday night because Coach Carter's not going to have it any other way. No. And we know that for sure. Yeah. Um, let's look at Troy. I mean, obviously, as I mentioned with them, you know, before, um, but they lost to Oak Park 28-21. Um, their defense kind of got exposed a little bit. I know Coach Callahan, the defensive coordinator there, mm -hmm. Coach Frazier. Um, that game against North Farmington is going to be really interesting because last year, you remember last year at Ron Holland Field with yes. um, North Farmington um, shut Troy out 9 nothing, and North Farmington didn't, it was down to their third string quarterback in that game. Yeah. So if you're Troy, what are you thinking, right? If I'm Troy, I'm thinking this is a game that we can take. Mm -hmm. We can win this game, and you start on Monday preparing to win the game. You look at hours and hours and hours of film, and you look and you say, yeah, they've got athletes here, they've got athletes here, they've got athletes here. Let's put our athletes on their athletes. And can they win it? Yo, by all means. Will they win it? Yeah, I think they will. I am going to disagree with you there. Yeah. But I, think North I, I, I like North I play. like North against Troy. I really do. I I think I think Oak Park did something to expose them in that game. Yeah. Um and then there's Troy Athens. Vernon Burden's there at principal. Um Last two weeks, they've allowed 52 points. That's not good. Got to play defense. Got to play defense when to win games. I mean, like, yeah. obviously, you know, when you look at Troy Athens. And you, you got to score points. They have. They've scored points. It's just. Yeah. But they're one and three. Their only win was against Berkeley. Berkeley, we got to talk them in a minute. We will talk. Oh, my them. goodness. Yeah. I mean, like, but when you look at Troy Athens, last two weeks defensively, it's not been good. No, it you... hasn't. No. And I don't know. I don't know if they've lost players to injury. I I the, don't know. The Frazier game when they lost 14-6, six guys were out. Yeah. But you could tell there was warning signs after that loss to Frazier week one. There was warning signs. And that's not a good good start to the year if you lose to Frazier way they did. Yeah. And, you know, that's. You know, teams go through this. Even if the schedule is in their, in their favor, you have injuries. You have maybe some academic issues. You have something that's going to derail your program. And the good teams find a way to get around it. Mm -hmm. Not to say Athens isn't a good team, but you're right. They better shore that defense up in a hurry. Yeah, and especially when you have when your new principals Vernon Burden there, you know that he's gonna be watching with severe interest with the football program. I mean, like, really. And they got Seaholm this week, and that's that could be that yeah. And again, you play them as they come and you you try to get your team prepared the best you can. Mm-hmm. And, you know, let the chips fall where they may. It's 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 never easy when you're one and three. No, you know you. But the thing you have to do is not deviate from what your game planning is. Mm hmm. And when you look at the blue right now, you would you agree with me? See, home's the best team in that division. No question. Then it's then you would then I would say North Farmington would be number two, then Oak Park, then then Troy, then Troy Athens. Yeah, but watch out for Oak Park. Yeah, Oak Park if, is the wild card. If Coach Carter gets him on a roll, but you're right, you know, all roads go through a home. Right, all roads go through the forest. Yeah. All roads go to the Maple Forest. Yeah. And Seahome, to me, there's a reason why I have ranked high in my poll this week. They are legit. Yeah. Um, let's go down from the blue to the gold. Um, you know, when you look at, I want to do a good, a good story first. I want to talk Pontiac. First two wins of the year, they got 
snapped the 42 game yeah. losing streak against Manchester United's Mitch Foley. Um, and then they had that overtime 44 42 craziness game against Detroit um, Lincoln King Academy. Mm-hmm. And then unfortunately, they had to forfeit week three because of a COVID outbreak. Yes. And then last week, they didn't look good against Royal Oak. And I talked to Coach Wendell Jefferson about, about this. They were up eight seven in that in that stretch, and then things really went south. Yeah, but how great has it been mm-hmm. to see the Pontiac program come through with a couple victories? Mm-hmm. It had to do wonders for the kids. Yes, yeah. You know, some of those those players had gone through year after year after year of zero and nine. Yeah, and they can't. Yeah, believe me, there's. There's a lot of kids are not going to play football if they know that they're going to go, if they're going to get whomped every week. Mm -hmm. And how nice was it to see them win the first two? Especially Uh, against bad size Bishop Foley. Yes. You know, a good team. Yeah. Connie Donaldson, I think, had six touchdowns in that game. Yeah. And I was, you know, I was really sorry to hear that they had to, you know, forfeit a game because of COVID. No, no school should have to do that. No. But this is the day and age we live in. This, I've been looking at the Saturday football results, and every week you see at least one forfeit in there. Mm. And you never used no. to see that. No. But when you look at Pontiac, the way that that team's been, I think their game against Berkeley is a big one. It is. And that is at Pontiac. Berkeley, how do I describe this? I'm shocked. I'm shocked that Berkeley, who not more than three or four years ago, was a, was was claiming division titles every year, has fallen off the way they have. What happened? 160 to nothing in four weeks. 160 to nothing. Yeah. That's not good. No. I've had Coach Sean Shields on my, on my podcast. I mean, like, one thing is a, is something is amiss there. I mean, I know they changed offensive cha- coordinators. That really, last year was a complete disaster for Berkeley. It was a complete disaster. I remember the me over we culture they had on that program. Yep. But when you look at that program... In the first four weeks, they're saying, okay, maybe there's hope. Maybe there's hope. And then the first week, they play Wall Lake Central. They lose 42 nothing, And then they have a stretch of two weeks where they lose 40, 35 nothing. And then last week, they lost 48 to nothing. Yeah. And, and you hit, to make this worse, all of those games were at Hurley. Yep. And now... You look at what happened with Pontiac for mm-hmm. years and years and years yeah. and years. And look at the point differential that Pontiac had. And now Berkeley's going through it. Is it is it coordinators? It might be coordinators. It might be. That's, it might be. That's up for the head coach to figure out. And but don't you know, if you're gonna not score points. You can't give up 40 points. Or 35? <laughs> yeah, or whatever. Because they got a playmaking quarterback in Sonny Cabbage. But when you look at Berkeley, I mean, like, I thought this would be the third best team in the division this year. I, th- I have not seen Berkeley play. But I know that you're not going to be successful. And you're not going to have a good season if you're doing a lot of three and outs. And I would probably venture an educated guess that they're going through a lot of three and outs. Yes. The punter's got to be the busiest guy on the team outside of the bus driver. And that's not good. No. That is not good. I mean, like, especially with what everything at that team, you know, I mean, they are struggling right now. Is that, it a matter of who they've had coming up? You know, is it that they're having an off year getting players up from the JV? You know, that their program is going through, their whole program, top to bottom, 
you know, I mean, I their JV team was that okay I last year. I don't think they have a freshman team. They do team. not. Yeah. So you've got ninth graders playing JV football. That's not easy. No, it's not. And they're coming up the next year to varsity. Mm-hmm. So you've got sophomores playing up probably a, varsity. a lot of them playing on the varsity. And that's just, and that's is hard when you look at it here. I mean, obviously, you look at I know Coach Sean Shields very well. Great man. Mm-hmm. Great coach. But, you know, this is very unusual for him in two years, the struggle that they've been having right now. Yeah. And that's not good. Nope. I mean, and now they got a big one with Pontiac Lumen at Pontiac. Pontiac, if Kanye Donaldson can come back, because he was hurting, I know he was hurt a little bit. And I, when I talked to Coach Wendell Jefferson a couple weeks ago on the podcast, um, I think he should be healthy now. I think Pontiac will win that game. I think so, too. I think he had a great chance to win that one. Yep, and, it, and it'll be another statement win for Pontiac to go mm-hmm. from years of OANs to, to at least three. I think yeah, they can win three, four games. They have three, four wins. Mm-hmm. That's know, a confidence booster right there. What a comeback for that program. That is. Um, let's look at Royal Oak. I mean, Royal Oak, they're now sitting at 2-2 two and two right now. Colin Campbell looks like he's got something figured out defensively. I think for me with Royal Oak, offensively is the issue there for them. Michael Herman there at quarterback. Um, but their defense has been very good. I mean, they held Holly to seven points for a half and then lost them. I mean, lost a tough one. Been really competitive, especially in the defense side of the football. Their defense has been good. Mm-hmm. But you know what? That's been a problem with Royal Oak for the last four or five years, putting points on the board. Yep. And, yeah. Your defense can take you so far. Then comes the point you've got to talk to the other side of the ball, and you've got to score. You got to score, and that's really what Royal Oak's issue is. is they got to score. Um, and then let's look at, of course, Ferndale. I mean, like we're going to talk Avondale last. I think Avondale, the way they're started this, this year, has been really hot. Avondale has been on a tear. Avondale has been good. Mm-hmm. They've been very good. And it's a testament putting that program back on the map because they went through a couple tough years too. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's the problem. You get down in the blue division or the gold division, you have smaller schools, right? You don't get the turnout for these programs. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times you come, come out and like we talked um, about Berkeley by having to place sophomores and, you know, as they come up, just to get numbers. But Avondale's case, this offseason, they had a coaching change. Yep. You know, Bob Meyer takes over that program. Avondale's an air raid attack. Now you got them running misdirection, and you got to run a running back, running plays, misdirection, wing T mm-hmm. stuff. You look at the job that Bob Meyer's done, turning that team, you, you still have the air raid elements to that team. Now you're turning that team into a wing T team, and they're still winning and producing results. They're still, but it's the same thing we talked about. Yeah, you can score 50 points, but you better not give up 51. So that defense has stepped up too. Their defense has been just phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, you look at that team. That team defensively looks the part. It, do you look at when you look at Avondale, possibly in the post? Do you think when they go into Division Three? Do you see them maybe giving a team like Wall Lake Western problems? That's hard to say, okay, mm-hmm. because I haven't haven't seen a, a Wall Lake Western. I've seen a little bit of my old alma mater, which is now Central, mm-hmm. which is having its struggles this year. But I haven't seen Western. And look, the old saying goes, on any given Friday night. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they can they can upset a Wald Lake Western. I think they can. Uh, they can they can go in and upset anybody. But you know, the playoffs are going to be you know. Let's face it, the hmm. top teams in each division. Uh, they're going to be the top teams no matter what. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you could you know you make the playoffs, you might squeak out a victory, but are you built for a run? That's the question. 
Now, a team that I, I thought I had some high expectations coming into the year, but have really struggled a little bit, has been Ferndale. Everybody thought Fern, this was going to be Ferndale's year. Well, they had the two coordinators. I mean, the head coach of Crosswell Lex came over there along with, brought his seat with the coordinator with them. Yeah. And they had Colin Hawk, who's been a really, who was hyped up to be really good at quarterback. But, you know, they've really struggled for some reason. All the preseason people that think they know what they're talking about had Ferndale picked. I had them included. Well, you know what you're talking about. Yeah. But, you know, everybody had them picked to win their division. Mm-hmm. And you know what? It's the old thing. You you can win the division on paper, but are you winning it on the football field? That is the question. So, yeah, football's or, or football's had their struggles. Ferndale's had their struggles this year. Mm-hmm. And I can't put my finger as to why. You're right. They got new staff in. Right. They've got tremendous athletes in that school district. Right. As just channeling all this together. You think the transition period has been, you know, really has been the one that's been the most concerning with that team? Probably takes a year or two to get your program in there and up and running. You know, did they change the offense this year? They did. Yeah. So you have all these returning players having to learn a new system. They're going more of a spread look. You yeah. know what I mean? Obviously, you know, they used to be like a power type right. team, but now you're going to more of a spread. You know what I mean? And saying like, okay, wait a minute here. But when you look at changing offenses, it's hard to learn. It is. It is. And that's what the summer's for. And actually that's, that's what the off season's for. All the build up. you know, it's the time in the film room. Mm -hmm. It's the time doing chalk talk, mm -hmm. you know, not only with your quarterback, which is, you know, definitely needed, but you got to get somebody in to explain their defensive philosophy. You know, okay, this is what we're going to do offense. You guys, this is how we're going to stop them. Mm -hmm. And then making sure you've got the athletes in place to run what you're teaching. And when you give it a year mm -hmm. and be patient with them, you know, yes. with Ferndale. Um, when you look at, of course, the division right now, Avondale just really impressed with the transition they made this year yeah. going to that, changing offenses. Their defense has been good. Avondale, to me, is the best team in the division by yeah. far. Yes. And then the second best team in that division, you would say, yeah, who would you say? You know what? It's a toss-up after Avondale. Right. You know? I mean, Ferndale, you kind of put there. Royal Oak maybe is in that convo. Pontiac, I think. I think Pontiac's the second best team in that division. I'm being honest here. Could be. I think Pontiac is. Even though they lost the Royal Oak, I think when healthy, when dangerous, Kanye Donaldson, if he's healthy, I'm telling you, Pontiac could be the second best team in that division. If Pontiac wins four games, you are going to see a much different Pontiac team in 2024 simply because they will have that confidence of winning games going into next season. And I think Pontiac, Pontiac, they're a scary team. Really scary. And then Berkeley, obviously, I have them ranked last right now, obviously, with the um, with their struggles. I mean, I, I still can't believe. It's hard to explain with Berkeley the fall that they've had. I can't explain it. It's hard to explain. I mean, like, how do you explain it? Yeah. I mean, how do you explain it? I mean, you really can't. You know, we talked about putting in new systems and taking time to acclimate it. And, of course, being around Lake Orion's program since the leather helmet days, it. I think back to 1998 when Coach Bell took over mm -hmm. and completely changed the way of doing business mm -hmm. with Lake Orion's offense. And... Coach Tooley came in, took over as defensive coordinator, installed a, a a very, very aggressive defense, and Coach Bell took the players that had been there. Darren Tooley was the yep. quarterback, and took those players and reworked it from a, a power eye formation, which they had run before, right. To three, four wides, mm -hmm. throwing a ball all over the football field, and what did they do? They won. Yeah. So they won, some, and they went, and they brought in the jet sweep offense, and yes. they've won. Some changes happen quickly, 
and sometimes it just takes a couple of years to get get it through and get it implemented the way you want to do it. And then Avondale, obviously, when you look at with Avondale going, changing that all whole thing around, you know, it takes a lot of time, but it can be done real quickly. Yep. Um, any final thoughts, Coach Corliss? Well, I'll tell you what, what a season this has been so far. Mm-hmm. And, of course, we particularly pay attention to Lake Orion because we're here. And nobody, I, I think if you stopped, a hundred people going into the stadium and say, where do you think Lake Orion's going to be after week four? I don't think you'd find anybody would say they're going to be four. Or no. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look at a course like Berkeley, you know, like West Bluefield, um, three and one, you look at a course, Southfield arts and tech four and oh, you look at, um, see home three and one, you look at Harper woods. I mean, one, in, I mean like two and two, I mean like, you know, who would ever thought, yeah. Couple of things is Clarkston going? Is Clarkston going through a rebuild? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. I kind of think they do because they don't have their single. Well, couple, Desmond Stevens is saving them right yeah. now. And um, Oxford. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with them. Um, yeah. I. You know what? I think Oxford is trapped in being in Division One. In the red. In the red. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think yeah. so too. Um, it, will they do a realignment? That's possible. Will you see Oxford go to the white? That's possible. And yeah. will you see A and T come up to the red? A and T's gonna lose a ton next year. Yeah. And then you look at of course, is Troy, you know, with their schedule, obviously, you know, their schedule not the greatest, you know. You know, that's something I'm t- I'm keeping an eye on going forward there. Avondale, obviously, Division Three. Yeah. Um, let's keep an eye there. Um, just a lot to keep an eye on. Yeah. Will Groves move up? That's a question. Yeah. I don't I don't know if Groves could really come up and be competitive in Division One. I. I don't know. Or be in the red. Yeah, or I'm sorry, red. But Southfield A and T sure could. They sure could. So yeah, whenever realignment comes up, you may see some changes. We may be I expect some. We may be talking about entirely different team scenarios Mm -hmm. in the next podcast. Yes. We'll see what happens. Um Coach Doug Corliss, thank you for joining us here on the podcast this week. Thanks for having me, Sammy. It's been great. Yep. Well you can watch Lake Orion Dragon Football, the voice of Dragon Football. Announcing the call on Friday nights, Coach Doug Corliss. All right, now, everybody, thank you for um, joining us this week. We're going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at second Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information around the OA. We're keeping keep an eye on everything going around the league. Also, um, make sure um, everybody stays strong, stay healthy. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Take care. See you then. God bless.